Uh, first of all, the Mac Pro is a really expensive, low volume computer that in the grand scheme of things, doesn't particularly matter to Apple's earnings. So let's get that out of the way. But these Trump tariffs and China do, especially when it comes to the iPhone and the upcoming launch. Do you expect to hear much about Apple's thinking on that in this upcoming call? How much hinges on it? Yeah, you know, um, I'd say broadly, China, China tariffs is one of these things that could help expand a contract evaluation of the stocks. I do think what's happening from a trade basis impacts Apple. Uh, but, but just to have the, you know, the, the level set right now is most Apple products have been exempt from tariffs so far. Uh, the debate will be when List 4 goes active, uh, what, does, what happens to Apple at that point. So, so far they've kind of skirted all the tariffs. L List 4 is a big one to watch for. Uh, so far there's no update on that, but that's the one you worry about for Apple. And last quarter, when uh, Tim Cook talked about what went right, he talked about kind of trade tensions easing up and that improving, it, 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 from what I recall, the conditions on the ground in China. Then right after that, things got bad again. So how much is that going to factor in? Yeah, you know, uh, tier one, things get bad, they got a little better, and now you're kind of, in, you know, kind of back to square one, I feel, with the tariff issues, right? Our sense and the data we have seen on a monthly basis on two fronts, one on services, uh, there's been a pretty big acceleration of services and app store revenues out of China. So I think that's going to be a notable positive for the company. On the iPhone unit data itself, I think the months of April and May were fairly decent. They seem to have picked up some share. And then the month of June got rewarded back. So I think units, it's a, it's a bit more of a mixed commentary. On services, China is going to be a big positive tailwind for them. Amit, I realize the services story continues to grow or has been growing in recent quarters, even as iPhone sales uh, have have lagged. Still, the iPhone is still such a big part of revenue. How important is this next upgrade cycle to the company? Yeah, um, you're being very generous by saying lagged, by the way. It's been an outright decline, <laughs> close to double digits so far. So I appreciate lagged. Uh, Listen, um, iPhones matter, and there's no you know, two ways around it. I, I do think uh, the bigger excitement, and not to jump a whole year ahead, is going to be not the iPhone that comes out this fall, but really the one that comes out the year after this, the 5G iPhone, and what that could do to the model. Um, I think in the next, next iPhone, iPhone 11, the debate will be units will be down a little. I think that's expected. Uh, but what can Apple do from a pricing perspective or a marketing perspective to help draw sales? I think that will be a focus. But our expectation, iPhone revenues will be down 4 or 5% with the next iPhone launch as well. Are, are you saying they, we could be talking about, instead of a $1,000 phone, like a $1,500 phone? No, no. I, I, I think iPhones, uh, the price points will be the same. In terms of uh, pricing, I guess my take was, do they up the promotional activity more aggressively, Apple itself, uh, and give you better rebates on it? But I do think from a price point basis, these phones will be the same prices as the iPhone XS as we had last year. Why do you have an outperform rating on the stock? Why are you bullish on this name right now? You know, um, it's, on, it's on three simple factors. One is we think services is, continues to be underappreciated. That business will keep accelerating. Uh, second is we think gross margins will keep inflecting higher from services and the fact that commodity prices are coming down for them, plus there's leverage in the model. Uh, the third is, uh, you know, Apple does have a tiny bit of cash, $163 billion on the balance sheet <laughs> that gives you a lot of protection. But does the margin story concern you if indeed they do get, whether you want to call it promotional, uh, more aggressive uh, on their trade-ins, trying to accelerate the upgrade cycle, might that offset the benefit that they would get from services margins? You know, it, it, it's, it's a great question, and I, I really do think what the stock does on this earnings call and beyond may just hinge on that answer uh, or what happens really. Uh, you know, our gut, you have two big tailwinds, services and commodities, memory pricing coming down dramatically, right? Those two, I think, can help you buy 130 to 150 basis points on the gross margin line. The headwind is exactly what you said. It is the promotional activity and also FX going a little bit against them right now. But I think how those four things play out is what's going to drive it. Our take, margin will expand maybe in the 38 to 38.5% range over the next few quarters.